Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peru's episode number 141. And yes, boys and girls, we are here in Las Vegas in the middle of traffic because uh, we're going to the east side. So there's gonna be traffic. And I'll tell you what, man, speaking of traffic, I have been trafficking my sleep, AKA procrastinating on my sleep because Disney Plus launched. Okay, for those of you who don't know what Disney Plus is and you've been living under a fucking rock, uh, Disney Plus is a new stream service launched by Disney with, generally speaking, all of their media products. All of the fucking things that's Disney related. So you can imagine, you can imagine a nerd like me, like, oh my god, they got all the Marvel movies, they got all the Muppets movies, they got all the Star Wars shit. Oh my lord, they even have some of the best sports movies ever. I mean, Miracle. Miracle is the greatest fucking sports movie. Sorry, kids. Sorry, I'm not going to say uh, Major League. I'm not going to say Remember the Titans. It, it's Miracle. Okay, Miracle is the greatest fucking sports movie out there. And they got all of that shit. Disney Plus got all of this shit. They even got the super racist cartoons from the Disney Vault. And I'm like, yes. Yes, give me this fucking FCC free shit, son. Yes. And of course, The Mandalorian. I, I just fucking watched that this morning, and I'm like, oh my god, as a Star Wars fan, you're just panicking, like, oh, we got a live-action Star Wars series, this is gonna be great, it's gonna be weekly, and I'm nerding out, and I am probably not gonna get enough sleep. Hence, I'm kind of, like, all over the place today, I have, I have too much fucking caffeine in the morning, went to the gym, gotta do some fat blasters, aka, uh, lifting weights, because I don't do class. I don't know, man, something about going to the gym and taking classes, it, it's just never appealed to me. You know, following along the direction with some asshole up top, you know, doing shit. Like, I, like, I feel you if you're a newbie and you get awkward around, you know, isolated areas in the gym. Like, that's fine. That's fine. I totally get it. But for me personally, if you ask me, like, yo, man, why don't you go to the fucking group uh, workouts, you know, in, in the gym? I just say, yeah, no, I'm not, you got, not my kind of shit. <laughs> it's not my kind of shit. What's also not my kind of shit is cheating. All right, let, let, let's 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 move right along and right, right along into that shit. I stuttered my words there. So I'm pissed. I'm pissed about this news. The Houston Astros, aka the Houston Astros, have been caught cheating. Yeah, they've been caught cheating. Signaling the pitchers from the seats, right? Using illegal equipments. They've been doing this shit since 2017. And yeah, that includes the World Series. And for those of you who have forgotten, yes, I am a Los Angeles Dodgers fan. And yes, this news fucking pisses me off. And no, the MLB ain't gonna do shit about it. The Houston Astros get caught cheating flat out. I mean, the fucking former pitcher confessed that dude went snitching. Holy shit, man. Like, every detail is out now, relatively speaking. And you're going to tell me, oh, yeah, that's not cheating. All you fucking loser apologists, you're going to say that shit like, oh, it's not cheating. We didn't cheat. Bullshit. Shut the fuck up. All right, Houston Astros fans, here's what I need you to do. The ones who say, oh, we didn't cheat. What are you going to do about it? We still won. You fucking losers. What I need you to do right now is take that opinion, write it on a piece of paper. Get that piece of paper, crumple it up, shove it right up your ass, shit it out, and eat that shit, and shit it out again. Because it's a load of bullshit right there. That's a load of fucking bullshit. And it pisses me off because, yeah, the MLB's not going to do shit about it. The Major League Baseball isn't going to do shit about it. Are you fucking kidding me? There's too much fucking mummy, mon mummy. There's too much fucking money pumping in and out. They're not going to do shit about it. They're not. Oh, they get caught cheating with one of the biggest fucking scandals in baseball <laughs> in the last few years. But, yeah, we'll just, we'll just settle it down, tone it down. This shouldn't be a problem. Fuck you. Fuck you. Like, I love my Dodgers. I do. Unconditionally, like a fucking idiot. But shit like this is why I'm like, yeah, fuck baseball. <laughs> fuck, fuck baseball. Like, fuck, fuck baseball in the sense of like, yeah, this is like a really old league with commissioners and, and, and fucking executives who, are, who don't change with the times. Like, they think doing the fucking marketable shit that all their goddamn uh, underlings are telling, oh, this is going to bring the kids in. Like, you only listen to that shit, but, like, your sport is dying. Fuck you. 
No one's showing up to the stadiums. Get the fuck out of here. And I apologize if it sounds like I'm shitting on baseball right now, but I'm just pissed, okay? I'm just fucking pissed at the whole Astros situation. The fucking Astros, right? So take what I'm saying with a fucking grain of salt, man. I'm coming from the saltiest motherfucking place as a Dodgers fan, hating on the fucking Astros, and I'm gonna fucking never let these cocksuckers forget that shit. Like, if there's a goddamn Astros fan, I'm gonna let them know, like, dude, you're, you're a cheater. Cool. I hope you know that fucking World Series victory don't mean shit. Oh, we got the shut the fuck up. Fuck you. Shut up. Shut up. Just want to slap all that negativity out, baby. Pa! And thankfully, for Seattle Seahawks wide receiver in the National Football League, Tyler Lockett, who was sidelined in the Monday Night Football game against the San Francisco 49ers, seemingly injured. Uh, something along the lines of a bruised leg, and it could have been worse, uh, initial diagnosis uh, assumed. But thankfully, thankfully, uh, Tyler's okay. Nothing too serious, just a minor setback. Not a long-term out, so dodge a bullet there, Seattle Seahawks fans. We dodged a bullet there when we should. I mean, with that win, we dodged a bullet. With this fucking injury scare, we dodged a bullet. And no games this week! We dodged a bullet. I love you, Seattle Seahawks, but you guys are like gonna fucking give me a heart attack this season. Holy shit. Cardiac Seattle. Uh, it's Cardiac Seahawks. I, there, there's no other fucking way to say it. Holy shit, dude. It has been nuts. It's been really nutty. And you know what else? The NBA has been really nutty. I'll tell you that right now. A lot of teams that you don't expect to be good are good, and the teams you don't expect to be bad are bad. And then there are the New York Knicks. Yeah, 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 there's the New York Knicks. So apparently, I'm, I'm just, you know, just browsing through the interwebs, watching the YouTubes, and I see a bit of news that says, David Fisdale, on the hot seat. What? Why? Because all oh, the GM basically ratted him out. What the fuck? Oh, they should be winning more games. Based on what? Based on what? Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? What? Like, man, I'm a dumbass NBA fan, but you look at that Knicks roster and you think, there's no fucking way you're making even the fucking ninth seed in the Eastern Conference, the Eastern Conference. That roster is so fucking weak. And Knicks, the organization, they've been feeding fans hopeless lies. Hopeless lies. Oh, guys, we're going to fucking take so hard, we're going to get Zion Williamson. You settle for R.J. Barrett. I'm not berating R.J. Barrett by any means. I love that kid. I love this draft, like this draft class, man. All these kids look so happy, so positive, and... It's a lot of great vibe, and I wish them the very best in their careers. But R.J. Barrett, unfortunately, he goes to the goddamn New York Knicks, which is pretty much a death sentence for any NBA players. And so not only did you fuck up this whole tanking thing, which New York Knicks fan, like dumbasses like Michael Rappaport, will say, oh, it, was, it was the most perfectly calculated tanking. No, you just sucked ass. And you were just hoping that you were lucky enough to get in the top three lottery pick. You got number three. You got R.J. Barrett. Wow. So now the next talk was, oh, yeah, man. We're going to sign KD. We're going to sign Kyrie in the offseason. We got max cap space. We got cap space for two max free agents. Kyrie wanted nothing to do with the Knicks. He goes home to Jersey. Well, technically Jersey, but it's the Brooklyn Nets. They were based in Jersey, and he grew up watching the Nets. All this jazz from Kyrie, and good for him. And he brings a snake friend along, KD. KD flat out just, yeah, dude, I had no intentions of going to New York. Fuck that shit. Because why the fuck would you play for an owner who's so delusional, who has been poisoned by the shit-ass GM thinking, oh, they're going to be great. And you end up in the fucking off-season free agent signing. You end up signing guys like Julius Randle, Marcus fucking Morris? Like, what the fuck? You essentially signed four power forwards in a bare-bone roster thinking this is going to be a competitive team? Get the fuck out of here, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? 
And then you put your fucking head coach, who's decent enough in his job, you're going to put him on the fucking hot seat and make him the goddamn scapegoat? Shut the fuck up. I cannot fucking stand the goddamn Knicks, man. I feel for the fans. I do. And then they're the idiot fans. They're like, hey, we're going to get better. We're going to sign Giannis. Giannis ain't going to go to that fucking shithole. Are you kidding me? Until James Dolan sells the team. Sorry, Knicks. Like, you're, you're fucked. You are fu- I don't know what else to say. You are absolutely fucked. Like, you know, you had a young guy that you drafted, and he was all in to living in New York. But he got traded. Because he couldn't handle this bullshit of an or- organization. Chris Stapps Porzingis. Yeah, Chris Stapps Porzingis. And everyone fucking forget Chris Stapps. Oh my God, Knicks. You are so fucking terrible. Holy fuck, dude. Haven't been relevant since the 70s. You're basically the fucking Miami Dolphins. We're going to tank really well, and then you fuck up the tank. Oh, fucking Knicks, dude. Ah! Piss me off. Piss me off. It does. But like I said, the NBA is providing a lot of narratives. It's providing a lot of great stuff. And to me, as a Lakers fan, obviously biased here, to me, as a Lakers fan, what genuinely excites me after these at least 10 or so games for generally all teams is and I know it's a small sample size is that the Lakers and the Celtics are on top of their respective conferences let me let me let me repeat that again the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics are first in their respective conferences now I know the Celtics have at a diff- bit of a different route than the Los Angeles Lakers. They've had more success. They've been to the conference championship, all that good jazz. But to me, the NBA isn't the NBA without the Lakers Celtics rivalry. I've said this for years. I said, man, 2020, Lakers Celtics final. It's going to be fucking great. And you know what? It feels like this is going to happen. It feels like it might just happen. I made it in my early season prediction where I said, the Lakers, Celtics are going to go to the NBA Finals, and I believe the Celtics might win it in a 4-3 to three series. Uh, but even then, I'm just, I'm excited because that rivalry is everything, dude. It is. Like, if you study the history of the Lakers-Celtics rivalry, it's amazing. And of course, it's not really a rivalry because uh, the Celtics won in more championship games and beat us in those championship games. And so, where we have 16, the Celtics have 17. Now, for the Lakers, it's a bit more spread out. There's a bit of an era, you know, stuff there. But I'm just excited that these two franchises are rising up at the same time. The cream comes on top, and you're going to eat that cream. This is delicious. Cream is delicious. What's also delicious, boys and girls, and yes, I live here in Las Vegas. I am a Vegas Golden Knights fan, is Alex Tuck forward for the Vegas Golden Knights will be making his return after missing four games a very dirty elbow hit from Adam Lowry of the uh, Winnipeg Jets so thank god we got Alex Tuck back because our third line has been looking like such dog shit that I'm real real happy that he's coming back I, at least gives Gallant some options which I don't even know if he I don't even know if he actually like considers options. Like there, there are times where I look at Galan like you're 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 kind of stubborn there, dude. <laughs> you, you you gotta be a little bit more, bit more flexible. I, I know Cody Eakin is your guy. He's 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 a rad dude, but you can clearly tell Cody Glass is a made center, and you keep playing him out playing him out in the wing, and it, it's doing you no fucking favors. I would say you got Alex Tuck back. Why not experiment with Cody Glass in the center, Tuck and Eakin out wide in the third line, and maybe they'll fucking start producing. I don't know, because Cody Glass can actually set up passes and shit. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, the Vegas Golden Knights will be facing the Chicago Blackhawks here in Las Vegas at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I will not be at the game, but the good thing about the Golden Knights versus Chicago Blackhawks is we are 5-0 against them in our entire history. So... <laughs> That's so weird. Like to me, that is it five and or a six and zero? I don't even know. But I all I know is that we have never lost the Chicago Blackhawks. Which I'm telling you, that is a weird stat. That is so fucking weird. But there you go. Never lost the Chicago Blackhawks, but we have been slipping as of the last few games. So hopefully, hopefully Vegas can figure things out. And finally. Speaking of figuring things out, I want to talk about this gentleman. 
Arsene Wenger, formerly uh, manager of Arsenal Football Club, a football club that I love very much, but they've been they've been tearing my heart apart the last uh, few months. But a bit of a positive news that's kind of outside Arsenal but related to Arsenal. Arsene Wenger has a new job. He will be FIFA's head of global development. Now, I don't really know the technicality of, of what that job is, but what I assume and what I feel like it is, is Arsene Wenger being able to use the best of his mind and the best of his abilities and his talent to expand the game of football. Um, and all, honestly, all I can hope for is the best uh, for Arsene Wenger. And it was funny because on Twitter, you know, there was a really funny quote, but very funny but heartwarming quote. And it's a Twitter handle by poorly uh, drawn Arsenal. And they said this, you know, this announcement from FIFA, it's basically like seeing your dad as a son, seeing your dad get his dream job and and he's so excited about it and I, I couldn't be happier for Arsene Wenger I couldn't be happier I wish him nothing but the best of luck <sighs> and yeah I, I, I anytime I think about Arsenal I, I get super depressed <laughs> so there you go there you go that's how we're gonna end this episode on a kind of like morbid but decent enough sending out so yeah should be good times boys and girls so Again, going to go ahead and end it there. Follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents, boys and girls. Oh, speaking of daily contents, Piggy Skin Picks will be up later today. I'm going to pick all my winners and losers of the upcoming NFL week, so be on the lookout for that. But for now, fuck off.